Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, we've been talking about basic concepts once again, a lot of it uh, hopefully is familiar to you from your previous uh, Statistics 1 course, uh, but hopefully you're getting a good opportunity to brush up the ideas once again, okay? Uh, so we've seen what a probability space is, we've started working with it, we've started computing probability of events, we started using properties of these uh, probabilities of events, what happens when you complement, what happens when you take disjoint union, what happens when you take union, intersection, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, we will proceed with this uh, study, uh, but before that, there is this notion, a uh, very important notion of something called distribution, okay. So, so if you if you look at a sample space, uh, the probability of the entire sample space is 1, right. So, that is what the axiom tells you, the first axiom is the probability of the entire sample space is 1. And then there are these outcomes and events, okay. So, this probability of the sample space sort of gets distributed over the outcomes in some sense, right? So, that is the distribution. So, that gives you a sense of how the probability is distributed over the outcomes and uh, that is the way in which you can uh, describe the probability function, okay? So, we saw how uh, for uh, when you toss a coin, the only thing the probability function has to do is to assign a probability to heads. Everything else takes care of itself, right? So, probability of heads is something, probability of tails is 1 minus that and that is it. There is nothing else that can happen. Now, there was only two outcomes there, so it was easy to do. What happens if there are more? What is, how is this notion of distribution going to work uh, when there are more outcomes? Okay, so that is the topic of uh, this lecture. So, let us get on with it. Okay, so I am going to start with an example uh, which is uh, throwing a die. When you throw a die, the sample space has six possible uh, outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, uh, we will assume that all the individual outcomes are events, okay? So, 1 is an event, 2 is an event, 3 is an event. We know that is already true, right? So, we have to have all those as out <laughs> events, otherwise it would not make sense. So, that uh, if you think about it, once you have all the individual outcomes as events, you can take unions, you can take uh, whatever else and then that makes every subset an event, okay? So, that is the sample space we are uh, dealing with here. Now, once you have every individual outcome as an event, every event has a probability. The probability function has to put some value on each of these events. So, let us say it puts the value P1 on the event 1, P2 on the event 2, P3 on the event 3, so on. So, you have P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. There are 6 values, all of them are between 0 and 1, okay, and that is what the probability function would assign to each of these outcomes, right? Each, each outcome is an event and to each of these events, the probability function is assigned a probability P1 to P6. Now, this individual events 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they are all disjoint and their union is going to give you S itself, right? It is a very simple thing to observe, right? Each individual outcome is an event, they are all disjoint, you take their union, you get the entire sample space. So, now axiom 2 kicks in and the axiom 2 tells you P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4 plus P5 plus P6 has to be equal to 1, okay? And that is it, you do not need any other condition. So, each of the pi have to be between 0 and 1 and they have to add up to 1, okay. So, this is the notion of a distribution, okay. You have a probability of 1 on the entire sample space, you have a whole bunch of individual outcomes, you simply distribute that 1 over all of these, uh, that probability of 1, the total probability of 1 over each of these individual outcomes. Each guy gets a fraction, they all have to add up to 1, that is it. That is a complete description of the probability space, of the probability function, okay? Now, uh, a very simple example is when the die is fair. If the die is fair, all the pi are equal. If they have to be all equal and they have to add up to 1, each one is 1 by 6, right? That situation is called uh, equally likely outcomes or a uniform distribution, okay? So, you have distributed your 1 uniformly over all the outcomes, the probability of 1 for the entire sample space. Okay, so that's a simple example to give you an idea of how uh, distributions work. Okay, uh, so let's uh, look at the a continuation of that. I mean, I, I told you a distribution is completely sufficient to specify the probability function, but I haven't told you how to find probability for events, right? So, okay, you have probability for each individual outcome. What if I give you a complicated event? Let's say the event is one, three, five. How do you go about finding the probability? It's actually very easy because any event now can be split up into a disjoint union of individual outcomes, isn't it? 1, 3, 5 is 1, union 3, union 5. 
Now, disjoint union of uh, events, you know that axiom 2 kicks in, you simply have to add the three probabilities. So, you get P1 plus P3 plus P5. Okay. So, this way, once you assign your distribution, once you take your probability of 1 for the sample space distributed over each of the individual outcomes, you are done specifying the probability function. Okay. Any event you give me, I will tell you what the probability is. Right? The probability function becomes fully specified when you specify the distribution. Okay? So, you will see this word distribution used over and over and over again when people describe probability spaces. In fact, nobody will say probability space. In fact, they will just say distribution. I am working with this distribution. I am working with the normal distribution. I am working with uh, uniform distribution. Some such distribution they would say and then that completely defines the entire probability space for you by defining the probability function properly. Okay? So, this notion is very, very crucial and important. And it makes it very simple to satisfy the axioms correctly without any problem. Okay? So, and, it, and it also gives you a tool or a simple way to compute probability for any event. Okay? Now, let us specialize to the particular case where you have equally likely outcomes or a fair die. Right? So, the die is fair. So, each of the PIs is 1 by 6. Now, what will happen to the probability of the event? It is just 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6. How many times do you have to add? As many as there are number of outcomes in that event. Right? So, P of E, probability of any event when you have the uniform distribution with equally likely outcomes is simply the number of outcomes in E, size of E divided by size of S. That is it. Okay? So, it becomes probability calculation of events become automatic in this uniform distribution. When you have a finite set of outcomes and you have a uniform distribution on them, probability of an event E is simply number of outcomes in E divided by number of outcomes in S. Okay, so, it is very simple in the in the fair die case, it seems very, very simple and all of this can be very easily generalized. Okay? So, let me just quickly summarize. Uh, distributions, uh, the idea of distributions is to assign probabilities to each of the individual outcomes in your sample space. Of course, there is a question of when is this possible, right? This is possible only when you can identify and count the outcomes, isn't it? One after the other, you should be able to count. Only then you can assign to each one a uniform, uh, you know, some probability. You, you go one after the other. You should be able to go one after the other and then give each of them something. If you cannot go one after the other, you cannot count one, two, three, etc., then uh, you, you can't do this, right? So, this distribution will not work in a such an easy way. Uh, so, such kind of sample spaces or sets are called countable sample spaces. Sounds very complicated, but you can just think of a finite sample space, right? So, any finite sample space, finite set is definitely countable. You can do one, two, three, first, second, third, etc. Just give it some, uh, you know, uh, probability and go through and finish it off. So, that is called, uh, that is the idea of a distribution. A particular example is this uniform distribution on a finite sample space. You have a finite number of outcomes, whatever those outcomes may be, you simply say I have a uniform distribution on those outcomes. That defines the probability space for you, that defines the probability function for you. You have equally likely outcomes. Every outcome is equally likely. Uh, so, probability of any one outcome is 1 divided by the size of the sample space, probability of any event is number of outcomes in the event divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. Okay? A very simple probability space to work with. Now, of course, the problems themselves can be complicated, so the sample space can get hopelessly complicated. We need more tricks to simplify your work, but still uh, this notion of describing a distribution like this is very, very important. Of course, the distribution need not always be uniform. You may have a non-uniform distribution, in which case it is uh, more painful, but at least in the uniform distribution, it is very, very easy to do this. So, uh, this is something to remember. Okay? So, we are going to see a bunch of problems next, as is our usual uh, thing that we do when we look at this lecture. We describe an idea and then we describe a few problems to drive the idea home. You will have more problems in your practice assignments and graded assignments. And uh, I, mean, I do not have to repeat myself for the 10th or the 20th or the 30th time. Doing problems is the only way you learn. Okay? So, let us let's get started. Okay, so, the, the problem here is very simple. There are marbles in an urn, uh, 5 red and 8 blue marbles. Okay? And you pick a marble from the urn at random. Okay? So, this is the problem. So, so you will have, so there are 5 uh, red marbles, R3, R4, R5, B1, B2, B3. B4, B5, B6, B7, B8, B9. It's only eight. Okay, so let's stop at eight. So that's uh, those are the marbles. Okay, and so, so you, you, you're just uh, let's say closing your eyes or something and picking a, a marble at random. How many outcomes are there? The outcomes, the sample space could be 
any one of these guys, right? So it could be R1 to R5, and then B1 to B8. And uh, what is the distribution? The distribution is uniform, isn't it? So we're going to assume distribution is uniform. So how, do, how is that conveyed? What word here conveys the uniform distribution to you? This is the word. Okay, typically when uh, somebody describes it in English, I'm not going to say the un it's uniformly distributed or something. I'll, I'll usually use the English word like this, right? I'll say pick a marble from the urn at random. So that's a phrase. This phrase at random suggests to you that the distribution is uniform. So look out for these phrases, okay? They're very common. They're sl slightly non-mathematical as in it's in English, but you should just read it and understand that when somebody says I'm doing something at random, they imply that there is a finite set of possibilities and I'm going to pick one uniformly at random. Okay, so the uniform distribution is implied. Uh, some of them, some, some uh, questions, they may emphasize the word uniformly, but sometimes even if they say at random, they're not given anything else, you would assume uniform, isn't it? There's no other thing more. Okay, so how many possibilities are there? there are 13 total possibilities. And uh, you may be interested in an event, probability of getting red. Okay, so this is your event. So the probability of that event is the denominator, you have total number of outcomes, size of S, which is 13. The numerator, you have the number of favorable outcomes and that is 5, isn't it? So it's quite easy to compute these kind of probabilities over a uniform distribution, just count, that's all. So what is probability of blue? It's going to be 8 by 13, okay? So this is uh, the ease with which one can work with a uniform distribution. And, uh, and then notice how this at random word or phrase uh, suggested uh, the uniform distribution to you, okay? All right, hopefully this was simple. Let's uh, move on to the next problem. Uh, this one is slightly more uh, complicated and that's just because maybe the sample space is larger, okay? So you're throwing two dice, okay? Each of them is one to six, one to six. The first one can be one, 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 two, like that. And the question is asking you about the probability that the sum of two numbers is eight, okay? So it's not really mentioned, but uh, let's try to look, write down the outcomes. The best way to write down the outcome is like a pair, right? So you can put one comma one, one comma two, one comma three, one comma four, one comma five, one comma six. Okay, or you can have two comma one, two comma two, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6. And I'm not going to write everything out for you. So you can go all the way to 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, 6. Okay, so you have likewise a lot of outcomes. The size of S is 36, so there are 36 possible outcomes when you throw two die, two dice, okay? And uh, that's what it is. And, and we're gonna assume once again the uniform distribution, okay? So what in this problem is suggesting the uniform to you? I mean, I haven't really told you, I'm just telling you in words, it's not given in the problem. Usually, you know, two fair die are thrown, it means, I mean, you expect the distri distribution to be uniform, it's fair dice, so you expect it to be uniform, okay? Now, what is the probability that the sum of the two numbers is 8, okay? Now, the event E I'm interested in is sum of the two numbers is 8, okay? So, 1, 1 and all is not there. All the way up to 1, 6 is not there. The first the guy that qualifies is 2, 6. The next guy that qualifies would be 3, 5. Next guy who qualifies would be 4, 4. Next guy would be 5, 3. The next guy would be 6, 2. Is that okay? So what's the probability of E? You have five events that are favorable to you. Five, I'm sorry, five outcomes that are favorable to you in this event. And there are 36 total outcomes. So it's five by 36. So that's the probability that you will get a number eight as the total. So you can calculate like this for anything else. Instead of eight, if I give you 10, you know what to say. If I give you 20, you know what to say. If I give you one, you know what to say. If I give you two, you know what to say. I mean, so just enumerate the number of cases that are favorable to you and divide by 36. You'll get the answer for this problem. Okay, simple enough problem, but hopefully it gave you an illustration of this uh, uniform distribution. 
Okay, so here's another problem. This is from your textbook, uh, the textbook by uh, you know Shiva Atreya, Deepain Sarkar, and Steve Tanner. Uh, they describe a situation where uh, someone's living in an apartment and uh, you know they, they, they've lost their key. Okay, and uh, they go to the security in the apartment and ask, you know, I've lost my key. What can you do? And the security person has uh, 50 keys and is not willing to, you know, is not able to distinguish. Let's say between. Uh, each of these keys, maybe there are 50 apartments in the complex and uh, the security person has all the 50 keys. He doesn't know which key fits uh, which apartment. Okay. So, uh, the, a person of interest is, uh, you know, trying out one key after another in a sequence. He, he takes the first key, tries it. Uh, if it works, what is he going to do? He's going to stop, right? If it doesn't work, he's going to go to the next one. If it doesn't work, he's going to go to the next one, next one, next one, till he finds the key that works and he's going to do that in order. Okay. Now, any of these keys could be the key that fits the person and that's where the randomness comes in. Okay. So, if you want to look at outcomes, how would you write down the outcome? The outcome could be, you know, a tick. What is a tick? Tick meaning uh, tick at the very first time. The first key that he tried was the right key or it could be no and a tick or it could be no, no and a tick or it could be no, no. A no and a tick. Each of these are outcomes. Okay, so in your sample space, you have one outcome, second outcome, third outcome, four outcome. This is a comma, by the way. Hopefully, you see that this is a comma. Okay, so so this is uh, this is how I'm describing the outcome. So it'll go on and on and on. What will be the last one? The last one will have dot dot dot. Forty nine times this x will repeat. You know, if I, if I were to own that apartment, I think the last outcome is guaranteed to happen with probability one, right? So, I mean, I try it in a sequence. I'm sure it'll never get, I'll, I'll, I'll get the last key uh, to be the to be the right key. I mean, I, that could be because of just my own experience with how, how lucky I think I am. But, you know, it's it's not, that's not a reasonable assumption to put uh, pro on this uh, probability space. And, and, and is a uniform assumption reasonable for this? I would say yes, you know, I mean, it, it can happen that, you know, I mean, it, any any one of these things uh, s uh, it can happen, it could be, you know, all of them are uh, okay in some sense, right? So, you, so you try uh, one after the other, the person doesn't know where the right key is, it could be anywhere and you're trying it from one side, one after the other and this is the best we can uh, come up with, right? So, hopefully this, uh, this gave you an idea of how a very different looking uh, sample space still has a uniform distribution and it's uh, something nice to look at, okay? Uh, you may want to contrast this with so many other cases, but this is something uh, interesting. It's in your textbook as well. Okay, so the last question is, uh, is again something that I picked up from your textbook. It's, it's very interesting. It has a different way of uh, thinking about it. So, three people and there are three hats, let's say three people from a cricket team, they have three hats and the three hats get mixed up, the identical hats, there's nothing to distinguish between them and uh, so, 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 notice what happens, there are three people, P1, P2, P3, these are the three persons, okay and uh, their hats get mixed up and various possibilities can happen now. What are the possibilities? Uh, it could be that, you know, the hats get mixed up and each person is picking up the hat. Uh, maybe P1 picks up H1, P2 picks up H2, P3 picks up H3, that can happen. Or maybe, you know, H1 here, but uh, you know, H3 here, H2 here, this could happen. Or maybe H1 itself uh, did not happen, you know, maybe this became H2 and then uh, I guess this uh, became H1, this became H3, this could happen. Or, you know, this is H2, this is H3, this is H1, this can happen. Maybe the first person picked up H3 and then the second person picked up H1, H2. Or the first person picked up H3, second person picked up H2, second. Okay. So, that's it. That's all, that's, that's all the possibilities. So, if you want to put up uh, in an outcome, so you would get uh, all these outcomes. This is your sample space. Okay. So, the three hats got mixed up, H1, H2, H3. And uh, each person picked up the hat. Uh, the first person could pick up uh, H1, second person could pick up H2, third person H3, or any of the permutations of 1, 2, 3, or H1, H2, H3 is possible. Okay. So, a lot of people, when they write down the sample space, they'll simply drop the H also. 
what is this H doing here? It's just additional uh, ink that's wasted, right? What is really important is the 1, 2, 3 and the sequence in which the 1, 2, 3 comes, okay? So, quite popularly people just use the permutation, okay? The first one is a permutation 1, 2, 3 in the same order. Second one is a permutation 1, 3, 2 in the same order, etc., 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 okay? So, this is the uh, outcomes and uh, this is, I, mean, I think a uniform distribution is very reasonable here, right? So, we have said, right? Each person picks a hat at random, okay? So, it is very reasonable to expect a uniform distribution over each one of these outcomes, okay? Uh, that is okay. So, now the question that is asked is, what is the probability that none of the persons get their own hat, okay? So, the event E I am interested in is, none of them should get their own hat. So, if you look at H1, if H1 shows up in the first place, I am done, right? So, because the first person got their own hat. If H2 shows up in the second place, I am done as is also. So, that case is also not interesting. If H3 shows up in the third place, that is also not interesting, okay? So, looks like you have very few cases, isn't it? So, first one is rolled out, second one is rolled out, uh, third one is also rolled out, fourth one is okay, isn't it? So, fourth one is okay. So, it could be H2, H3, H1. Oops, where did I go? It could be H2, H3, H1. Uh, what about the next one? H3, H1, H2, that is also okay. What about the last one? H3, H2, H1? No, because H2 is the same, right? So, that is it. So, there are only two, event, two events uh, which gave you this. So, probability of E is 2 by 6 or 1 by 3. So, the probability of 1 by 3, none of them are going to get their own hat, okay? Now, uh, this problem is, is quite simple. The way I did it with just three persons, it seems very, very simple. Uh, I want you to think about 30 persons. Okay. Now, well, when will 30 persons have the same hat? I don't know. I mean, it's, it could be some reunion or something where all of them were given a hat and they were asked to put it into some place and then they have to go back and pick it up and then they realize nobody knows what their original hat was, right? <laughs> so, they start picking up randomly. Uh, if you have 30 persons, unfortunately, the number of permutations of 30 is really, really, really large, right? So, 30 factorial is very, very, very large. But I might still be interested in this probability. What is the probability that none of them get their own hat, right? So, this could be something of interest to me. Uh, do you think there is a reasonable way to do this? It's, you cannot, of course, write down all the possibilities. It will take uh, probably the rest of the universe's lifetime or something like that to finish in that mode. So, we need something smarter. Uh, so, that is uh, maybe it is possible. I will urge you to think about it. So, that is an open problem for you. Think about how uh, you can compute the same probability when there are 30 persons instead of 3, okay? So, such uh, such permutations where none of the original positions are in their own place, right? So, that is called a derangement and this is called the probability of a derangement. Uh, there are lots of solutions. I am sure all of you will go search it on Stack Exchange and all that. A lot of people will write up uh, things on it, try to understand and look up how to find probability of derangements. It is an interesting problem, okay? Uh, that's the end of this lecture. We'll uh, hope we saw uh, the notion of a distribution. In particular, we saw the example of a uniform distribution and how to start working with uniform distribution, writing down the outcomes, writing down the favorable outcomes, number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes is the probability of an event in uniform distribution. Okay. Uh, thank you very much.